So here we are in January 2017, with the whole of the new year to look forward to. But the first horizon that we're going to concentrate on is the end of the tax year. That's the 5th of April 2017. Over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to be bringing you some tax planning ideas. There are just 12 weeks until the 5th of April, and each week I'm going to be bringing you something to consider that could potentially save you some tax. We'll not be able to go through these in a great deal of detail, so you'll possibly need to come and speak to us if any of them take your fancy. This week, I'm returning to the subject of pension contributions, not because it's more or less important than any other, but because pension contributions can take some time to implement. Remember that you only get the tax relief if the pension contribution is actually paid before the 5th of April. There are limits to what you as an individual can pay into a pension. Anybody can pay £3,600, but otherwise it's limited to your earnings. There are no such limits for companies. Remember that to get the tax relief in 2016-17, the last date for payment is the 5th of April 2017. So there are some people who really should be thinking very hard and seriously about making pension contributions. Firstly, there are those who are in danger of suffering a clawback of child benefit this year. Paying a pension premium can result in up to a 72% tax relief when you take into account the child benefit that won't be clawed back and the higher rate tax relief. Maybe you're a buy-to-let landlord facing higher rate tax for the first time. Well, if you put money into pensions, then this will help to alleviate the higher rates of tax. Do you get your company to pay substantial contributions to your pension each year? The maximum allowance for a company contribution is £40,000 per annum. But remember that you can bring forward unused allowances from the previous three years. If your earnings are above 150000 then there is an abatement of the allowance and it comes down to a minimum of £10,000. I'm going to move into a slightly different subject at the moment, but I'll come back and show you how it's related to pensions shortly. The 0% starting rate for interest applies to the first £5,000 of interest, provided that your taxable employment income plus trading profits plus property income is less than £5,000. The personal savings allowance applies a 0% rate to another £1,000 of interest, and the dividend allowance applies a 0% rate of tax to the first £5,000 of dividends received. So where does this get you? Well, if you're on a low salary from your company, it gets you £22,000 of income completely tax-free. So what's this got to do with pensions? Here's the twist. What about if your company wanted to pay a pension contribution to your pension? It doesn't have the cash to pay the contribution. You lend the company the money and get paid up to £6,000 of interest, which of course is paid net of tax. The company gets tax relief on the pension contributions and the interest it pays you. You get up to £6,000 of interest, grossed up, completely tax-free. I find that many people these days have lost interest in making pension contributions, but hopefully this short talk today will have whetted your appetite to consider the possibility of making contributions and how this could save you some tax. I'm Alan Long from The Long Partnership, making life less taxing.